Lucius Apuleius Saturninus was the tribune of the plebs responsible for getting Gaius Marius elected to his fourth consulship in the year 102 BC. As the Senate attempted to make Marius irrelevant during the lull in the attacks from the migrating Germans, it was Saturninus who kept Marius's name on the voters' lips throughout the 103 BC year. From a noble, plebeian family, Saturninus's ancestors boasted a consulship in the year 300 BC, though the clan had fallen into obscurity in the centuries following. Before his tenure as tribune of the plebs made Saturninus a polarizing household name, he served as quaestor for the 104 BC year. The quaestorship was a normal, lower-level magistracy occupied by young men seeking to climb the cursus honorum to high public office. As quaestor, Saturninus was tasked with overseeing the grain shipments at Ostia. Ostia was Rome's main port on the Tyrrhenian Sea, which transferred maritime goods to the Tiber River for distribution in Rome. Unfortunately, Saturninus's quaestorship coincided with Sicily's slave war, causing a reduction in grain shipments, and dramatically driving up grain prices. The Roman people, still reeling from the loss of two armies at Orazio, panicked over the possibility of famine. In the hopes of easing panic, the Senate placed a confidence-inspiring face on the grain issue. Quickly removing Saturninus, the Senate bestowed it on the one man who would demonstrate to the public just how seriously they took the situation. Marcus Aemilius Scorus was both an ex-consul and an ex-censor. He was the Senate's princeps senatus, house speaker, as well as the leader of the conservative party known as the Optimates. No accusations of corruption or mismanagement were recorded against Saturninus, but the removal of his post was highly unusual. The historians tell us that, as a result of losing his position, Saturninus turned on the Senate. He chose, instead, to throw his support behind the Populares, the movement rapidly gaining momentum under Gaius Marius. Needing a way back into the Senate, Saturninus made a pact with Gaius Marius. Marius, who was in his second term as consul, funded Saturninus's campaign to run as tribune of the plebs for the 103 BC year, and he expected Saturninus to make it worth his while. Marius had used a tribune of the plebs, named Lucius Marcius Philippus, to enact the first phase of a plan to obtain large amounts of land, on which Marius could settle the veterans of his Numidian campaign. Marius could not turn these sixth-class citizens, who were now hardened soldiers, onto the streets of Rome where a lack of work, boredom, and wine would make them detrimental to the city's safety. So, in 104 BC, Marius had Philippus legislate to have large amounts of land from the conquered Numidia placed into the care of the tribunate. This land could not be sold, leased, or granted except by the will of the plebeian tribune. No mention of Marius's Numidian veterans was made, and because the Senate thought Philippus intended to block Marius from obtaining land for these veterans, they willingly supported the legislation. Now, as the second phase of his plan, Marius needed to make certain that land was distributed to his veterans, and Saturninus was expected to secure this legislation. Saturninus agreed to oblige Marius, but he also had his own fish to fry while in office. Hoping to make a quick name for himself, Saturninus undertook the prosecution of Quintus Servilius Caepio for the embezzlement of the missing gold of Tolosa. Unfortunately, because the evidence against Caepio was circumstantial, and the criminal courts were juried by Caepio's elite peers, Caepio was found innocent. As tribune of the plebs, Saturninus legislated a new treason law which protected the sovereignty of the Roman people, as represented by the tribunes of the plebs. In this new treason court, juried only by plebeian equites, or knight class, instead of the senatorial elite, incompetent military commanders could now be held accountable for their actions during campaign. The exact provisions of Saturninus's Lex Apulea de Maestate are lost to us today, but it defined a type of treason that was different from the perduelio, high treason, already on the books. Perduelio covered instances where Roman enemies were intentionally stirred to war, secretly funded for revolution, or sold state and military secrets. Maestas, however, was a new type of treason in which anyone deemed to have insulted the majesty of the Roman people could now be charged. To create such a law was, in and of itself, a slippery slope because it left the definition of maestas too vague. Thus, offences against Rome's majesty could be interpreted to mean whatever a prosecuting advocate wished. However, upon hearing that commanders of war could now be prosecuted on behalf of their lost loved ones, the Roman people did not hesitate to vote the Lex Apulea de Maia state into law. With the passing of this law, Saturninus's new treason court was created. The first victim of this new court was, once again, Quintus Servilius Caepio. Caepio was prosecuted by both Saturninus and Gaius Norbanus for the loss of his army at Orazio. 
Because the prosecution had the hard evidence of the Senate's command, and Caipio's refusal, to combine his army with that of Maximus, Quintus Servilius Caipio was found guilty. He was stripped of his seat in the Senate, and exiled no less than 800 miles from Rome. Additionally, Caipio was fined the sum total of 15,000 talents of gold, a value today of roughly $2,775,000,000, which was the exact total of Tolosa's missing gold. His properties around Rome and Italy were confiscated, so that he could not have family members empty bank accounts and liquidate capital. Between sentencing and exile, Caipio was denied access to his family. But Caipio had likely emptied his accounts and liquidated his capital before the trial had begun. Though the treasury never recovered a single talent of his fine, Caipio lived out the rest of his life as a wealthy exile in Smyrna, modern-day Izmir, Turkey. The Roman people were pleased with the outcome of Caipio's trial, though his punishment seemed to be more for a crime which the prosecution had failed to secure conviction. But a conviction was a conviction. To the Roman people, the ends justified the means. Unfortunately, the Roman people were less than pleased when the ex-consul, Malleus Maximus was also brought to trial. There was little doubt in the public mind as to Caipio's guilt, but Maximus was a broken man who had the lives of countless thousands on his conscience, including those of his two sons. Maximus seemed just another victim of Caipio's arrogance. But Malleus Maximus was still a commander who had lost his army, and the prosecution highlighted every wrong decision the panicked commander hurriedly made during the massacre. Malleus Maximus was also found guilty and exiled from Rome. Next to be dragged through Saturninus's new treason court was Lucius Licinius Lucullus. Though Lucullus had lost no army, he had disbanded his legions in Sicily in the middle of a slave war. His destruction of his own camp, and burning of all the siege equipment surrounding the besieged city of Triacala, ensured the continuation of Sicily's slave war. Lucullus was prosecuted by Servilius the Augur, the same commander who had been given Lucullus's command by the Senate. Servilius the Augur argued that Lucullus had failed to take the city of Triacala by choice, so that he could prolong the war in order to plunder the province of its riches. He also accused Lucullus of destroying his camp and burning his siege equipment to prevent anyone gaining evidence of embezzlement. Because Lucullus's actions made it impossible for Servilius the Augur to gain any military success before losing his command to Manius Aquilius, Lucullus was found guilty and exiled from Rome. He left behind two teenage sons growing to despise new men and the populares. The Lex Apulea de my state would remain a law for the rest of Rome's history, ultimately leading to the plethora of treason trials held under Rome's second emperor, Tiberius Caesar, which marked his as a reign of terror. But, for Saturninus, this new treason law saw his popularity skyrocket with the Roman populace, grateful that, in punishing Rome's inept commanders, Saturninus had given them some type of emotional compensation for the loss of their loved ones. In order to capitalize on this new popularity with the people, and possibly even to identify himself as the political heir to the brothers Gracchi, Saturninus befriended an ex-slave by the name of Lucius Aquitius. This freedman claimed to be the bastard son of Gaius Gracchus and a slave girl. Aquitius supposedly resembled Gaius Gracchus in appearance, and circulated the story that he had been manumitted and posthumously adopted as sole heir in the will of his former owner. The Optimates, who thought Saturninus was conning the public, produced Sempronia, the sister of the brothers Gracchi. The elderly Sempronia publicly refuted the claim that her brother fathered any bastard children, and she refused to acknowledge Lucius Aquitius as her nephew. Unfortunately, no one cared about Sempronia's opinion. After all, how likely was it that a nobleman who fathered bastards with his slaves would brag about it to his family? During his tribuneship of 103 BC, Saturninus finally made good on his obligation to Gaius Marius. Calling the plebeian assembly, Saturninus legislated into law the right for Gaius Marius to start Roman colonies in Africa by settling his legions on the Numidian lands held by the tribunate. Because Marius's legions were ignorant of the arrangement between Marius and Saturninus, they threw their full support behind Saturninus for what they deemed honourable service to them. Between his massive popularity with the lower-class plebeians, and now the support of the legions, Saturninus quickly became a man of the people. He spoke regularly from the rostra in the Forum Romanum, drawing larger and larger crowds who liked the tones of his anti-Senate speeches. Because of the role Saturninus played in the indictments of Caipio and Lucullus, his publicity stunt with Lucius Aquitius, and the knowledge that Saturninus was an ally of Marius, the Optimates took steps to have Saturninus officially removed from the Senate following his term as tribune. The same Metellus Numidicus whose command of the war in Numidia had been stolen by Marius, won election as censor in the year 104 BC. 
One of the duties of the censors was to go through the senatorial rolls and expel those who no longer met the minimum financial requirements for membership. Senators could also be expelled from the Senate for any behavior deemed unbefitting. Along with his brother, the censor Metellus Caprarius, Metellus Numidicus tried to eject Saturninus from the senatorial rolls. Unfortunately, the crowds that always gathered around Saturninus and Lucius Aquitius grew angry. After Metellus Numidicus suffered injuries at the hands of angry supporters, Metellus Caprarius capitulated, and allowed Saturninus's senatorial enrollment to stand.